สวัสดีค่ะ I'm c h e ฟรุ่งที่ว่า from Bangkok Thailand I'm Chef i n c h a r from i n a v i a Restaurant in Sheraton Grand w h i t e f i e l d Now I will show you how to make stir fry chicken with dry chili. It's local dish from North Thailand, Chiang Mai, a small village. The specialty of this dish is homemade dry chili, and it's made for special day like birthday, marriage, and prayer. This is the only ingredient of the stir fry chicken in dry chili sauce. We have oil, soy sauce, c a f e l a m leaf, brown onion, cashew nut. And galanga, garlic, and onion paste. Fry chicken, onion slice, sugar, and chili flakes. First, I put the oil, two tablespoon, and the galanga paste, one spoon. Saute, make more aroma. Now you will got some aroma of the galanga and garlic and the onion. Now the paste is ready. I will add soy sauce. Two spoon. And chili flax, one spoon. Now I add c a f e l a m leaf. And onion slice. Now I will add the chicken, fried chicken, and mix everything together. Little bit of brown onion, cashew nut. In North Thailand, coconut milk is rarely used. So the fried chicken is done. I will do plating later. In the village, they never throw the banana flower. So now we make the. I will show you how to make the banana flower salad. The ingredient what I use for the salad we have soy sauce, mint leaf, coconut cream, lemon juice, chili chop, chili paste, sugar, chicken, and coriander. First, I will add the chili paste, one spoon, sugar, one spoon, chopped chili. One spoon, soy sauce, two spoon, and chicken, coconut milk, two spoon. Lemon juice, two spoon. Now I mix on everything together for the sauce. After all ingredients mix together, 
I will add banana flower. This is a raw, raw banana flower. I'm making julienne and soak with the lemon juice. If you not soak in the lemon juice, the banana flower become black color. I mix together one. And add mint leaf. Now I will show you how to plating. Before you plating, you have to warm the chicken. You can serve with a jasmine rice, banana flour, salad. Thank you so much for sharing lovely recipes about the Thai cuisine. Very, very interesting recipes. I think now we can share some knowledge about the ingredients as well. The first foremost which comes to me uh, in the Thai ingredients is the jasmine rice. Can you share some knowledge about the jasmine rice? Okay, this is a jasmine rice what we're using in the hotel. Okay. It's calling Mamun Krong and yeah. Thai people, they call it jasmine rice the cow homily. Oh. You know the jasmine rice right after you 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 cook in the rice, the steamer coming it becomes like a pandan leaf yes. flavor. That is the significance of the jasmine rice, the yes. aroma. Yes, and the jasmine rice this is a long grain rice. Long grain. Oh, yes. very nice. Where is it cultivated in Thailand? Which we, area? Actually, we grow in the center of Thailand. Mm -hmm. That calling uh, Chat Chen Sao. Right. That way we have the empty land and the people they will grow the rice and they make the factory also in that place. Okay. And I've also heard there are two types of jasmine rice. One is the brown, one is white. Yes. Both is uh, the almost same but the red rice become like a very healthy. That's one. because of the brand in it. Yes. Nice. And you know this mamun kong is uh, like a good brand and a very good product for the jasmine rice. So when we are cooking the jasmine rice, what precautions should we take care and you know, how should we cook jasmine rice? You just, if you use the, this pan, you just add the water and uh, put in the rice cooker. Just the absorption method, no need to, no need to wash so that all the starch, the, the highlight of the jasmine rice is the starch, the sweetness. So if you wash, I believe the, the starch loses its yes, uh, form, right. That's why no washing when you're cooking the, the jasmine rice. Excellent, thank you. Another ingredient which comes to my mind is kaffir lamb. I believe that brings the entire Thai dishes to a different next level because of the presence of the kaffir lamb. Can you explain more about the kaffir lamb? Okay, I have the sample for you, chef. Uh, we have a this is a kaffir lamb leaf. Right. Kaffir lamb leaf, if you want to use for the curry or stir fry, both you can use. But before you use, you have to broke it in the center like this. Right. for the flavor coming so it, that all the flavors can you know combine with the curries in it yes yes if you not broken this is uh, the flavor the not flavor coming not much coming more the and one more thing this is a kaffir lamb lemon right kaffir lamb lemon we almost use for the curry paste mm -hmm. you just peel the skin and put in the curry and blend it together okay so uh, how is it different from the regular lemon how different first the flavor the flavor is entirely different. Yes. yes. Lemon, no, uh, the leaf of the lemon that you cannot use. But this one you can use both. Both, actually. And even by looking also, what I can see is uh, the curly texture of the kaffir lime and the lemon are very different. But even by looking, we cannot replace kaffir lime with uh, the regular lemon in any of the curries. Yes. That is what South Asian cuisine is using. And you know, the significance uh, taste which comes is because of the lemon. And I believe now with vitamin C required during this uh, pandemic times, this is also a very rich source of vitamin C into yes. our uh, diet. This is a, like a medical, medical for for good for your health or for your blood also. And you know the Thai lady they use this one for the burning, burning okay. the kaffir lamb 
and uh, mix with the oil and put in her hair. Oh, in the hair also for hair growth. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Make like a uh, for home the shining. Recipes. Yes, for home recipe. This is uh, for shining and for the black hair. Wow, excellent. Yes. Good. The next ingredient which everybody would like to know is the shrimp paste. Can you tell more about the shrimp paste which you use in your cuisine? This brand is uh, Trashang. Okay. This is uh, from Thailand and which I use in my restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandma, for my grandma, before they use the shrimp paste, okay. they have to wrap with the banana leaf and slow grill and put in the curry paste. Oh, okay. To get the aroma out of the yes. shrimp paste. And you know, when you use more the shrimp paste, you no need to use more the fish sauce or more salt mm -hmm. because the shrimp paste already has the taste of the right. fish and shrimp and the uh, salty already yes. have that. Because as a preservative, we are making the shrimp paste. Salt mm -hmm. is used, so we have to adjust our recipes as per the salt which is already present in the shrimp paste. Yes. How is shrimp paste made? How is shrimp paste made? See, the Thailand, South Thailand, they have a lot of sea and right. seafood. Mm -hmm. So the person when they're going out for catch the feed on the seafood, they got some small fish, some small shrimp. Okay. They take it back and they do some like a homemade of the shrimp paste. Okay. They take a small uh, shrimp, wash with the sea water, right. and mix with the salt and put in the dry sun, sun dry. Sun dry. Okay. Sun dry. After that, not too much dry. After that, they coming back again and pouch and again mix with the salt and put it sun dry for the three days. Okay, so basically what they are doing is they are preserving it naturally with the salt and fermenting it and taking the moisture out of the shrimps. Yes. And that's how they preserve it and then store it in a cool and dry place. Am I yes. right? Yes, yes, chef. yes, sir. Widely it is what I have also seen in the recipes is and all the Asian countries, I'm saying mostly in South Asia, uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Shrimp paste is used for curries and sauces yes. to, to give the flavor. Yes. And almost South, South East Asia they use the shrimp paste because on that plate we have the sea. Right. And they're doing the same like a... So indigenous, very local to the place. Yes, yes. And preserving it naturally. Yes. The next, next ingredient which everybody wants to know is, which is very commonly found in Thai uh, recipes is the coconut. Coconut milk and the coconut. Can you explain more about the coconut? What kind of coconut you use? How do you extract the coconut? Okay, uh, for for I'm using the mature the coconut. This is a more fresh and less water. So mature coconut to be used and which has less water and more okay. of flesh. Yes. Okay. And uh, you know the the coconut is really uh, important for the Thai curry. Right. In Thailand, we have a lot of coconut right. and. Very, very the abundance. It is found in abundance everywhere. That's yes. why it is used in most of the recipes. Yes, chef. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how do you take out the coconut milk? I coconut? have to grate it, grate it off the so coconut. Grate the first. coconut and then. And after that, I have to put the warm water mm -hmm. and uh, squeeze. So the first, first extraction which comes, that is called the coconut cream. Yes. I believe the uh, fat content in that is about 20% which is very creamy. Yes chef. And yes, sir. then we do the second extract as well. After we take out the first extract, how do we, then we put more water and then we squeeze out more. Yes chef, you're right. And uh, you know, uh, the first the coconut that we can make the, when you saute the curry, mm -hmm. you have to use for the first coconut. The first cream. That, yes. that become like a more fat and right. oil after so you it saute gives more the oil. flavor and yes. richness yes. It balance it out the spiciness and with the creaminess of the coconut milk yes yes that is how the balance of flavor comes in yes. and it makes it more rich creamy yes. and the flavor uh, taste which comes yes sir Another uh, recipe which you shared with us was the crab meat fried rice, the turmeric crab meat fried rice. I believe that's a very special recipe which your grandmother had taught you. Can you talk more about that recipe and the crabs you use in that recipe? Actually, this uh, recipe, the crab I use for the sea crab. You know that in Thailand we have uh, a lot of sea and a lot right. of sea food, so I can I can find very regular for the crab. Yes. And I give you one story. When I visit to my grandma home, mm -hmm. okay, around around her village, they doing like a uh, 
take out the shell. Okay. This shell in the crab. This shell, this shell the crab. Okay. Around her home, mm -hmm. and one and and she and one day I help her to to do the same. Right. My grandma and she take some of the what I what I take out the dish shell and she cook in the fried rice in the kitchen. And oh, she, she showed you there and then. Yeah, wow. and she give me the tip. So I like it. And after that, she teach me how to make. Okay. And the crab which you use, these are all uh, de-shell crabs which are already cooked for yes, your recipe. Sir. Yes, sir. They were already boiled. Yes. First the boiling, and after that, then we do the de-shell. Okay. So after the boiling, you de-shell the crabs, take yes, out sir. the meat. Yes, and sir. That crab is used for your fried rice. Fried rice. Yes. Very aromatic turmeric fried rice. I think one of the best fried rice which I have eaten. Mm -hmm. Next time, whenever I visit to Thailand, for sure I'm going to your village to taste that as well. Welcome, sir. And I believe you also told me that this is a very village recipe which is only on, on the street foods. Yes. Not shared in any of the restaurants. So no. very traditional to your village. Yes, yes. Excellent. You can buy only the some village only, they will make it. Oh, so you. that's why this recipe is come from my grandmother. Oh, super. Excellent. Another ingredient what we've been using in the Thai recipes was the soya sauce. Can you explain more about the soya sauce as well? Okay. Chef, I have something from here. Uh, this is a Lee Cookie brand. Okay. Actually, in Thailand, we have one brand that called it Healthy Boy. Healthy Boy. Yes. Okay. But that brand I cannot find in the Bangalore. So now I'm using for the Lee Cookie brand. Mm -hmm. The Lee Cookie brand, we have light soya and dark soya. Right. What is the difference between the light and the dark soya? Both different, uh, like a dark soya, this is a more, more color. More color and more. concentrate. Yes. And for the light soya, this is a very, very light. Subtle flavors, more on the umami side of the flavors. Yes, yes. And this one not, uh, not different much of the uh, healthy ball. Okay. It's different only for the color. This right. small. So color. you're using more of the light soya sauce in your recipes than the dark soya sauce, right? Yes, yes. Dark yes. soya. How often do you use dark soya? Dark soya I will use for the color of the soup or the like a uh, ratna noodles that I use for that. Okay. But majorly it is light soy sauce which you use. Yes, sir. Yes. And in the process of fermentation, I think both both are equally uh, the same same fermentation style of uh, making the soya sauce. Yes, sir. Right. And I have one more thing in my cuisine. I use for the maki seasoning. Okay. This is you know the maki seasoning when you make in the fried rice. Mm -hmm. The flavor of the after you use the maki seasoning, the umami flavor is coming. Very nice right. flavor and like uh, make you like a. Uh, Want to have that? Dish. Want to have that thing more? Yes, chef. Right. So this you use for your fried rice. Yes, chef. Right. So in fried rice, I use both of these. Mm -hmm. Both of these. This is the import for me. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, chef.